Welcome back. So our our follow-up lesson on hyperbolas um, is going to focus mainly on writing equations of hyperbolas given information that isn't so cut and dry. Um, and the beginning of your notes actually has a couple of review, re review problems from the previous lesson. Now, I'm a little short on time here, as usual. So I would like you guys to, um, if you need a little refresher on what it means to graph a hyperbola, Go back and <laughs> view the other lesson. So for the sake of time, we're going to skip ahead in our notes, and we are going to look here at number three. So the clues that we've been given. We are given the location of the vertices for our hyperbola and the location of the foci, which, you know, in theory, I should be able to visualize this and figure out what type of hyperbola we're looking at, but I always give myself a little plot. So it's never a pretty one, but whatever. So negative 10, 6, let's pretend it's like right there. Um, and then, slow tablet today, all right, and then four or six over here. So our, hy our hyperbola is going to look something like this. So the transverse axis, you can tell the direction of it, an opening and all that jazz. So I have a horizontal hyperbola, if you want to think of it that way. So the formula we're going to be using is x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. So the rule is you need to find three things. The, the center, which is h and k. And then we need to know how large a is and how large b is. And once you know those two things, you can figure it out. So of course they can't just tell us all that information. We have to kind of be told that through clues and we got to figure out the rest. So the vertices are at negative 10, 6 and 4, 6. So the center is going to be smack dab in the middle of that um, transverse axis. So you're going to find the midpoint. Clearly the y value is going to be a 6. But the middle of negative 10 and 4 would be, let's see, add them up and divide by 2. So that would be negative 3. So the center is at negative 3, comma, 6. We're already like more than halfway there. we got the center. That's the important part, right? So the other clue is they give us the location of the foci. And the 6 is not very interesting to me, but the negative 12 and the 6 are for the x values. So it's your choice which one you want to look at because they're going to be equidistant from the center. But I usually like to use the positive location of the foci, um, the one where they had to add the value of c. Because this number right here, 6, is found by taking the h value and adding c. So I can tell that our h is negative, negative 3, and then we're adding c. So solving this equation, adding 3 to both sides, you find out that c is 9. Not actually part of our formula, but that is going to help us figure out something else, because I think we also know that the value of a, we know the length of the um, transverse axis. If I, I mean, I don't even have to do distance formula, guys. Negative 10 to 6, uh, negative 10 to 4 is 14 units, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that means the a value is um, oh, here's 7. There we go. If the entire length here is 14, that means a value is 7. Yes, yes. I was just looking at my notes, and they kind of confused me for a minute, because for some reason I, I found a a different way, but it wasn't wrong. Um, if I knew the center was at negative 3, and then I could kind of figure out the distance from the center to either one of the vertices, and that was seven units in each direction. So that was another way to figure out the a value. But we kind of stumbled upon a and c. Both are important to us because I'm going to use them to use them to find my b value. So for a hyperbola, the formula is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared, 81, equals a squared, 49. Oops, it's ugly plus b squared. And I'm not, I don't even need b necessarily. What I really need is b squared. So I'm just going to subtract the 49. Um, that's a 32. Yeah. So b squared is 32. And that's what's going to go in my formula. So back to this formula here, x minus h. For us, that would be x plus 3 squared over a squared, which will be, I really need to find these things a little more easily. Um, 7 squared would be 49. Uh oh, tablet's going wonky. The minus y minus k, so y minus 6 over b squared, which is found as 32, and then of course equals 1 at the end of our conic. 
Okay, that wasn't too bad. All right, so here they give us a couple more clues. Um, the location of the foci, important. If I find the midpoint between these, that'll be my center. Let's start there. So the center of this hyperbola is at 0, comma, if I add those together, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Center is at 0, 1. So we just stumbled upon our H and K, both important. Um, and I haven't kind of talked myself through whether this is a horizontal or vertical one, um, but if I give myself a little sketch, I'll figure it out. So 0, 6 versus 0, negative 4, those are the foci, so it looks something like this. <laughs> Not like that. All right, when I graph it, it's just a vertical one, um, which means we're going to use the the y minus k squared comes first. All right, so we're actually almost ready. We just need to do a little more calculation here. Um, I know h and k, and I think we kind of know a. It says the transverse axis length is 8, so that would be the entire length of the axis, so that's double of a value is 8. So doing a little backwards math here, that means a is 4. That is importante to us. And then I think we know the, the value of like c, the distance from the center to the focus, point, one of the focus points. So I'm going to choose my favorite one out of these. I'm going to go with the positive one because it seems easier to work with. And the way they found 6 using our formula, it is, for this kind of a hyperbola, it is the y value plus a c value. So I should say the k value plus c. So k plus c for us would be 1 plus c. So a little math here, c is 5. Important, just not what I need. I need b. So the same thing as before, we're going to use our c squared equals a squared plus b squared formula. c squared is 25, a squared is 16, and I don't even need b, I just need b squared again. So solve for b squared and you get b squared is 9. All right, we're ready to rock and roll back to our formula y minus k. So that'd be y minus 1 squared over a squared, which is 16, minus x minus 0. You can write it that way, or you can just say x squared over b squared, which is 9, equals 1. All right, so far so good. Oh, here they go, giving us something different. So this time, they gave us the foci, which is, those are important. Of course, they're going to help us find um, the location of the center because they'll be that'll be in the middle and then we can kind of figure out c from the foci and then they gave me the equation of the asymptotes so that looks really scary right but the important part of that equation is the slope because remember we leave ours in point slope form but for your um, hyperbolas depending on whether it's vertical or horizontal this is either b over a or a over b we'll talk about which it is in a second so first a little sketch for myself two negative two and 12, negative 2. So we're going to have, <laughs> totally nailed it. Okay, we have a horizontal, oh gosh, we have a horizontal one. So it's x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. All right, let's figure out all these clues. Um, I'm going to start with the midpoint. The midpoint would be our center. So, our center is at 12 plus 2 is 14, cut in half 7, comma negative 2. So there's your h and k. And then, let me throw that here, this is a 7, this is a negative 2. I think we can figure out, for pretty much everything, um, we technically don't need to find c in this one, however, you have to be careful about this a over b, b over a ratio. Um, sometimes this ratio has been reduced. We saw that a lot where it was like 4 over 2 reduces to a 2 over 1. So you have to make sure that it makes sense for the length of the transverse axis in your problem. When I tell you that, um, let's see, this is horizontal. So the formula um, is plus or minus b over a. So this fraction right here is b over a. So you have to ask yourself, like, does it make sense to say b is 3 and a is 4? Well, if a is 4, that means the entire length of the transverse axis is 8 units, as opposed to something larger, because it would have been a reduced fraction. So I just wrote up a, a sample question on one of the tests where this ratio was reduced, and we have to kind of figure that out because it doesn't work for the problem. Like, 
I would go back just to be safe if I was on my test and make sure that when I find the value of C, the distance for C, that it makes sense for A and B being 3 and 4. So the center to the foci is 5 units. So 3, 4, 5 makes perfect sense for that Pythagorean formula there. All right, I think we're ready to rock and roll, guys. X minus 7 squared over, we just found out A is 4, so 16 is A squared minus Y plus 2 squared over 3 squared, or 9 equals 1. Awesome. All right. Let's let's sleep. <laughs> I've been a rough day here. Earthquakes. Who doesn't love a nice earthquake? All right. So the epicenter, epicenter of an earthquake lies on the branch of a hyperbola, represented by this equation, where the seismographs are located at the foci. So they want me to graph it. I'm not graphing this. I refuse. And then find the location of the seismographs. Well, it says right here they're at the foci. I'm going to skip the graph. I don't care. I don't care what my teacher says. I'm not graphing it. I refuse. Seismographs. Let's find the foci. So this is a horizontal <clears throat> hyperbola, so the foci, <coughs> I'm so sorry, the foci are at h plus, plus and minus c, comma k. So if we can figure out who h and k and c are, we're good to go. So the center, I will mark that down, that's at 50, comma 35, so there's your h and k. And then we have a squared and b squared. And remember, c, um, c squared is the square root. c squared is a squared plus b squared. So c, the distance of c, is 1,600 plus 2,500 square rooted, which is the square root of 4,100, which is 100 times 41, huh? So if I want a nice reduced clean answer, that would be 10 squared of 41. Oh, lovely. Yes, the real life answer of 10 square roots of 41. All right, so 50 plus and minus 10 square roots of 41, comma, 35. There's nothing more real life than that, guys. <laughs> Stupid, sorry. All right, it's a cool problem because, you know, it, it is a real life application of this, but no, you wouldn't say that's your answer. <sighs> the grassy play area is hyperbolic in shape. Uh, write an equation that models the curved sides of the play area. So basically, this lovely diagram here is showing you um, this park that happens to be shaped like a hyperbola. Center at 3, 4, and I can tell the transverse axis how long it is here. It's um, two units in each direction. So the A value is 2, and the B value would be, you know, we would have made this auxiliary box to graph it, but someone else graphed it, so that was nice. And it goes 1, 2, 3, so the B unit is 3, and I already know the center, I think we're ready to rock and roll X, no, Y, because it's vertical. I spoke too soon. Y minus 4 squared over A squared would be a 4, plus, minus, minus, um, X minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. So there's the equation. Very important note to have if you're building a park, apparently. No, it's not. If each unit represents 3 feet, what is the narrowest width of the park? So this part right here is 4 blocks. So every block is 3 feet. So 4 blocks times 3 feet gives us 12 feet. That was a nice little easy question for us. All right, eccentricity gets back. So remember, eccentricity is a ratio of the distance between the foci as compared to the distance between the vertices. So when I look at it, the eccentricity for a hyperbola, um, this does a nice job of diagramming what's going on. But we've had this chart before where it says for an ellipse, the eccentricity is between... Let's get this wrong. I have to look it up every time. Between 0 and 1. Okay, that would make sense. <clears throat> so if your eccentricity comes out to a number between 0 and 1, you're looking at an ellipse. Um, for a hyperbola, the eccentricity has to be greater than 1. Uh, if you think about where the foci are located in comparison to where the vertices are located, this distance is going to be far larger than this distance. So that's why it has to be a number greater than 1.
And then parabola is always on one. Eccentricity of a zero is of circle is zero. Uh, you can remember that because circles and zeros they look the same. Now that's not the mathematical reason. That's just a cutesy thing for you to remember. So these questions are on your notes. So let's take a look here. Um, let's see. The a value in this question is two. And then the B value um, is, who cares, because we don't need it, but we do need C. So for hyperbola, C is the square root of A squared plus B squared, which would be square root of 25, which is 5. So setting up our eccentricity ratio, it is C over A, which is um, 2.5. So that's how we should have known we were looking at a hyperbola, but I kind of knew I was looking at a hyperbola um, because of the formula, but whatever. It's good to know. All right, here, boom, we got to complete the square. So let's factor out the 4 from the x's. There we go. And then for the y's, let's factor out the 9. You can already tell we're looking at an ellipse, but sorry, I shouldn't have spoiled it for you. y squared minus 10y plus something equals, and then um, I subtracted the 253 over, and then we're going to have these other two things over here. So I'm going to put a 16 here for completing the square, but realize it's really a 64. And then I'm going to put a 25 here, but it's really a 225. So, we have 4 times x minus 4 squared, plus 9 times y minus 5 squared. And then, good news, I don't know how to add that, so thank goodness I already keyed this. This comes out to a 36 over here. And we definitely don't have a circle, so I'm going to have to divide everything here by a 36. because my teacher wants it in, gen in the conic form, the standard form. So we have x minus 4 squared over 9 plus y minus 5 squared over 4, that reduces to, equals uno. This guy is clearly an ellipse, but let's talk about the eccentricity ratio. So eccentricity, remember, is c over a. For an ellipse, c is um, the square root of a squared minus b squared. So that would be the square root of 5. So square root of 5 over a, which is, whoops, there we go, 3. And mm, I don't really know what that ratio comes out to, but it comes out to something between 0 and 1. <laughs> so it's some decimal that we could type in. When it comes to the test questions, um, I don't care if you give me this ugly radical ratio or if you give me a decimal approximation. Frankly, the decimal makes more sense, so it's up to you. Ah, oh, this concludes our conic sections lesson on hyperbolas. So remember, the other part of the lesson is just graphing hyperbolas. If you need a little refresher on that, I'd go back.